going to be talking about foliar feeding both corn and soybeans. Uh, the system that we're working with is good for corn, soybeans, wheat, alfalfa, cotton, virtually any plant that has a root system and leaves will be responsive from foliar feeding if it's done in the right manner. And there's been too much emphasis put on just a few simple basics of foliar feeding, but there's a lot more uh, technical aspects that need to be done with the practice to really see it perform. Uh, some of the basics, we've kind of got a 10 step, what we call the foliar basics that people really need to be aware of if you really honestly expect to, to make foliar feeding work for you year in, year out, and use it in part of your production system. Uh, step one, obviously, is always going to start with, with a complete soil test. We want to see micronutrients and base saturations. It's always best if you know what the potential is of your soil environment before you try to maximize the potential of the crop on top. You know, you never build a million dollar house on a 10 cent foundation. You never build a 500 bushel corn crop on a poor depleted malnourished soil. So you really have to understand what the environment is you're starting with, with the soil test. Within that, uh, the next step would be looking at the ratios, understand what you need to have for a ratio balance with calcium and magnesium is probably the key ratio to look at. You never want to have that calcium magnesium ratio under four to one. On base saturation wise, if you have a base saturation calcium under 62, at least don't bother foliar feeding. You have to have good available calcium available to that plant season long to see maximum potential of a foliar program. Calcium is the key to foliar feeding working. Thirdly, we'd have uh, managing compaction, being able to grow a deep healthy root system for that plant. We still are using the, the root system to pull the nutrition into that plant. The foliar feeding is just a complement to a good soil environment. Uh, know your limiting yield factors. Allow plants to luxury feed on any nutrition that they may need. It's more than just N, P, and K. Now, there's been too much emphasis just put on the big three of nutrition, N, P, and K. And we all know that that plant requires a lot more of a balance than that. Understanding what, what nutrients provide fruiting energy. Basically, we have ammonium, nitrogen, phosphorus, and almost all the other micronutrients are what provide fruiting energy. So you absolutely need to know whether you're wanting to grow vegetation or you're wanting to grow fruiting energy. There is a difference. Fertilizer is not fertilizer. They all provide a specific activity within the plant. Number six item is understand that foliar feeding is 10 to 20 times more efficient than a soil application. So the reason we always talk about one to three gallon per acre rates is because you can stunt that plant, you can actually set it backwards by pushing it too hard. You can create a toxic effect. So you're better off at one gallon than you are at 10 gallon with the foliars. As we move on uh, with our true application, we need to make sure that this, this process is done at the right time of day. We don't want to have that plant uh, shut down from being too hot. Ideally, we want temperature and humidity combined to equal no more than 140. If it's more than 140, stop the sprayer for the day. We do the applications either in the evening cool or in the morning cool, but we try and keep that temperature control. Um, within operation of that sprayer, we want high pressure and small droplet size, because remember we need that fog, that mist, to be able to make its way into that plant. Number eight, Realize that foliar feeding is not a substitute for root feeding. It's just a complement to that soil environment. We still need to have a good, healthy soil environment. The best results almost always will come on a healthy crop. That's when you see the most uh, notable return. You can help a sick crop, but you really can't uh, do enough for it to maybe pay for itself. So you're, you're always better off working with a healthy crop. Number nine, know the key plant times and staging for the nutritional supplementation of that crop. On corn, we're going to look at V4 to V5, which is when we determine how many kernels around we will have on that ear. V8 to V10 is when we determine the length of that ear. Pre-tassel and brown silk are both times of, of high nitrogen usage within that plant. We also change our nutritional uh, mixes based on the time of the year. Early season, we'll use pretty much a full micronutrient package. Later in the year, we'll trim that back and may just stick with uh, calcium, zinc, boron, and some nitrate, nitrogen, maybe a little sulfur. So we adjust all the time. 
Fuller on soybeans, what we're looking at for timings is, is early R1, which is when we're looking at bloom set. Remember, in order to have a lot of pods, we got to have a lot of blooms. So the real money makers with the foliars generally are always the first applications. We want to have a nice big round ear, plus we want to be able on the soybeans have a lot of blooms. So the early applications are really, in my opinion, the money makers. Um, R3, R4 is when we have our pod set. And basically what we want to do is control the amount of pod abort that we have. We want to put a lot of blooms on and a lot of pods, but we don't want the abortion to get us. Uh, so we need to control the abort rate on that. Uh, R3 application, R5, which is pod fill, and basically that's just uh, allowing that plant to have enough energy to make a nice big healthy bean in the, in the pod. And lastly, point 10, realize that foliar feeding is not just spraying fertilizer on your crops, it's proper timing, conditions, and balance, and an understanding of what that plant needs to, to perform its best, to have its most potential.